is going on YouTube? Although I feel like today it's like me too. Like YouTube. It's kind of a weird way of thinking about it. Anyways, what's going on? We're going to talk about a few different things today. I'm going to do a few shout outs, talk about the news. In fact, I'm going to skip. Eh, maybe I'll talk about that. Um, talk about prepping, radio stuff. Maybe talk about some hunting or lack thereof. Radio and the range. Ooh, that's right. Um, so, first things first, shout outs. First shout out is to Florida Singularity. Uh, he has not a brand new channel, but that's okay. Um, Hello. That was his voice. Hopefully I don't get a uh, copyright violation for that. But um, let's see here. See, I don't understand like some people's channels. All I see under his listings are uploads and play all, but I don't see like a videos bar. Oh, stop it. Which is really weird. Um, maybe because he doesn't. Oh, that's weird. So we've got a few videos. Well, y'all should watch Florida Singularity's recent video. He hasn't made one in two months, I guess, and tell him to make some more videos. He's got 79 subscribers. I was a 79th, so... In fact, I'm going to tell him right now. I'll be like, dude, make some more videos. Okay, so that was shout out number one. Shout out number two goes to Delania Crumb. Delania Crumb is not exclusively a prepping channel, but the way that I found her video, her most recent video, is I just typed in prepping into YouTube because I'm trying to check out new preppers. And her most recent video was a video with her four year old about prepping, which is cute. Um, I mean, it's more than just cute. It, you know, it's sensible to. I mean, on the one hand, you know, some parents might think, like, oh, I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably agree that at some point in your child's life, you're going to talk to them about being prepared in, in the event that things, you know, things aren't like they always have been power, society, water, what have you. So, so at any rate, her, her, not all of her videos are about prepping, but she's talking about a lot of things kind of relating to prepping, some politics stuff, firearm stuff, militia stuff. Um, you know, she might have some views that you don't agree with or you do agree with. That's, you know, I don't, I personally try not to uh, write off a channel just based on like one or two things that I may or may not agree with. Um, so I would just say, you know, take a look at her channel. If it's something that you think you might be interested in, go ahead and give her a sub. Um, it looks like she's putting out a, a pretty good amount of videos and I like to see channels that put a lot of effort into and not just a lot of videos, but original videos. Um, talking about Sweden. Yeah, man, Sweden is struggling right now. They're just... Stuff is going on in Sweden. If you haven't been following, just Google Sweden and read up about what's going on in Sweden. And uh, interesting stuff, anyways. So anyways, shout out, oh, some archery skills, that looks fun. Ah, oh, I want to get a bow and arrow. I was shooting with my dad over Christmas and good times. So that's shout out number two. Shout out number three is to Chatty Kathy 71 I will put a link in my video description because you're going to have to spell it right and the spacing and all that. Um, she has a three minute video about prepping, which is cool. Let me see how many other videos she has. 
Not that, you know, that's going to make you decide whether or not you want to sub, just out of curiosity. Two videos. Cool, cool. So, brand new channel. Let's give her some support. So, that is the first part of my to-do list on this video. News. I'm going to leave news for last because that's going to kind of... In fact, I think I'm just going to make that a separate video because it's all... That's, that's just too much stuff to talk about. Uh, some stuff I was doing today, doing a little volunteering at the Tank Museum. I was driving around the other mule, M274, and I really wanted to get some video of it, and I could have, but, you know, this one, the mule that I was driving today has four-wheel steering, and it's a little more squirrely than the two-wheel steering one. So, funny, the two-wheel steering one doesn't steer very well at all. The four-wheel steering one steers, like, way too well. So it's like they never really found a good medium because I think, uh, I'm sure there's a diff in the back of the thing, but I don't know. It just steers a little bit rough up front on the two wheel steering version. So doing some volunteering, we were attacking some trees today. We cut two really long branches, both of them. One of them was about, one of them was about like 15 or 20 foot long, way too long. And, uh, the other one was maybe about 12 foot long, both of them pretty fat SOBs. And quick um, chainsaw safety tip. I, I wouldn't say that I had a close call, but um, something happened that you generally want to kind of avoid. I was cutting a large, um, cutting the large part of the trunk and the bottom of it kind of swung right under the branch kind of in front of the ladder. Now, how would I, how could I potentially avoid, you know, situations like that? Um, cut smaller pieces, um, belay the cut piece or, you know, tie a rope to it and have a pulley or something and have someone else lower it down after I cut it. Um, have just a pull rope on it so someone can pull it away from me. And I didn't do any of those things. Was it a little bit more risky than perhaps I should have taken? Maybe. Um, I was using, you know, an electric chainsaw with a brake. So, I mean, you know, if the branch swung into the ladder, would I have fallen? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, um, might have landed on my feet, might have broken an arm, might have clung onto the trunk. It, you know, looking back, I could, I, I should have been a little bit more careful, but, um, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, you know, I was only you know, six, seven feet above this tank. Now, tanks are kind of hard to land on, that's for sure. But but anyways, doing a little chainsaw work. Um, so that was good. Uh, prepping. Prepping, prepping, prepping. Always be prepping. What are we doing prepping recently? Well, in fact, I think I'm going to tie this radio stuff into prepping, and I think I'm going to tie the range stuff into prepping. I can tie the hunting stuff into prepping. Um, so radio-wise, I'm not going to... can't really... Well, I mean, y'all know I live in L.A., so I guess there's nothing secret about that. But, but anyways, I have here from one of my good buddies who I volunteer with a radio guide to a lot of the different frequencies that the local people use not just the law enforcement but the fire ambulance schools public works um this is a ridiculously comprehensive little booklet that was put together by the uh like a volunteer um southland radio guide yeah it was, it was put together by like radio enthusiasts local radio enthusiasts and unfortunately, a lot of the stations around here are digital and trunked and all sorts of advanced stuff that I am not capable of understanding. I mean, I, I don't understand. I guess I'm capable of understanding, but I don't presently understand, nor do I have the technology required to talk to these guys but and gals and everyone that's on the radio. But at any rate, um, you know, like all preppers, I wanted to grab a radio because that's what preppers do is they grab radios and tents and tarps and stoves and, you know, they get ready, right? I certainly don't regret getting the radio. I have been able to listen to some uh, local, at least one local group. I've had kind of difficulty finding other local stations that are active because the thing is, 
if nobody's talking on it, um, you don't really know like how often it's being used, right? Even the one that I listen to, they're only it's not very active and they're only sort of saying stuff every, you know, ten minutes or so. So But you know, kind of real quick to touch back on that volunteering. Had I not like volunteered and met met my buddy, I would have never had the chance to borrow this book, which, you know, not something I would have ever found. Yeah, they have some of the stuff online, but not nearly as comprehensive as this. Um, so, you know, you get a lot more out of life than you realize sometimes, and you don't know what you're going to get out of doing something until you do it. Now, not to say you should always do things in life because you're trying to get out something out of it. In fact, I was actually just talking with my friend about that today. We were talking about making a difference in the world and how sometimes you put in a lot of energy and you don't feel like you're making as much difference as you could have. And I said something to the effect that, you know, that's true, but sometimes you don't do things because of what you expect to get out. You just do them because that's what you should do, you know. So, so deep, deep thoughts contributed by LA Prepper. You're welcome. So anyways, I'm going to get a little bit more familiar with the radio stuff. And in case any of you are super thrilled to see it, There we go. Now you might wonder why my radio is not in my bug out bag, which is in my car, and there's one simple reason. There's only one there's only one frequency that I've even confirmed is remotely useful. So what am I gonna do when the shit hits the fan with a radio that I can talk to exactly one you know government agency that's not gonna want to talk to me during an emergency? <laughs> So I'm, the point is I'm trying to become a little more familiar with it and get at least some local channels plugged in before I worry about trekking it around with me. All right, we'll go ahead and leave this on and see if anything interesting happens. But anyways, so by the way, in case you're wondering, this is a Baofeng F8HP, um, cool little dual band, uh, Dual band UHF, VHF, two-way, eight-watt radio, um, something like 50, 60 bucks. Actually has a light on it, too. I'm not 100% sure how to turn the light on, to be honest, but there is a light. <laughs> Comes with a belt clip and some other stuff, but... So that is some radio work that I'm doing on... Oh, here we go. Let's see what they're saying. 235 is probably probably his unit number or let me see here maybe it was the co uh, I think they were saying code 4 which I want to say is like no further help or something code for I thought it was like no for or like sirens off or god I used to remember what it was yeah no further assistance needed okay so like I'm fine in other words well anyways so that's some radio stuff that I was doing um went to the gun range and oh you know this might sound silly, but I like handling my firearms. Like, I I really enjoy the heck out of shooting, cleaning them. Um, you know, I do. It, it means a lot to me. Um, as an American, as a private, you know, as an individual, um, as someone who plans on being a family man, I think that being able to protect yourself and protect those who you love from those who would do you harm um, I think it's a very important thing, and I think it's very naive to to say that, well, I don't need a gun, or I'm going to call the police, or I have a bat, or I know martial arts, or I'm really big and strong, or I have a dog, or, or whatever it is. By the way, your dog, like studies show that your dog is basically <laughs> like not going to attack somebody. 
you know, maybe it'll bark, maybe it'll do something like that, but by and large, your dog is not going to save you from an intruder. It's kind of a, a kind of something that most people just hope that turns out doesn't really happen as much as people think. But at any rate, went to the range with my C9 and the Marlin 795. Uh, the Marlin was shooting dead on, um, you know, 9 for 10, 10 for 10 at 25 yards, definitely sighted in, doing fantastic, 100% ready to hunt with the 22, although I don't even know, you know, beyond like skunks and possums, I, I don't even know what I'm going to hunt with the 22. I mean, realistically, I can't hunt, I guess I could hunt squirrels up in... Los Padres National Forest, but I can't do it in LA County. So 22 is dialed in the nine millimeter. I actually shot, I just, I had a new grip on it. The new grip I put on several, like a couple months ago, but then the range burned down. So I hadn't had a chance to shoot with the new grip. And I just went out this last Thursday and shot, shot it. Um, Feels good, feels better. I mean, it's only the second time I've shot this gun and I did, wait, second or third? I think second, to be honest, believe it or not. Um, it did shoot, or I shot much better than I did the first time. I actually hit three for five of the big swingers at like 20 yards or whatever the first distance is, which I thought was miraculous, to be honest. I adjusted the sight, the sight was Sight was like way off. I don't know what the hell the sight was set at, but it was super low. I don't know if it got hit or it just wasn't sighted right to begin with, but I kept aiming low and I was like, I, I don't know why I didn't think it was the sight. Maybe I thought it was such a short distance that there was no way it could be the sight, but turned out a few screws on the sight and holy shit, the, I'm not as terrible as I thought I was. <laughs> so... Still had a few, um, a few going kind of not very close to the target, like a few feet off, you know, maybe 20, 25 yards, a few feet's not the biggest deal, but, you know, I'm really not trying to have like flyers like that, you know, I, I'm super new, I'm sure my stance wasn't perfect, or my grip wasn't perfect, or maybe I was flinching, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I do need to take a, a pistol class at some point. Um, so I can try to learn some good habits and not, not have bad habits. Nevertheless, I have decided that I am more than proficient to defend myself at least less than 10 yards. Um, God forbid. I, you know, I try to avoid situations like that. Um, and, you know, maybe it's not fair to say I'm proficient, but at least I feel secure enough that I can operate the firearm safely and defend myself should someone break through my door with a shotgun in their hand. Um, Unfortunately, I have to unlock it and unlock the ammo and, you know, go through that old deal as a Californian, but it's all right. You do what you got to do, you know. You do what you got to do. So, went to the range. They were actually, they just have been opened for a week. So, if any of you are in the Los Angeles area, check out Angeles Range. Really awesome place to go. And Thursdays is half off. seven fifty. 750 for all day. That's not four hours. That's not two hours. That's all day. You're going to run out of ammo before you run out of time to shoot, probably. And I left after uh, I shot 100 rounds of 9mm and something like 100 rounds of 22. Uh, the 22 is dialed in and it's cheap to shoot and I love it to death, but I wanted to. I wanted to kind of do a little work with the 22 at like 50 yards and see if I could you know, get some nice groupings, but there were a bunch of guys with really high powered rifles and I'm not, I don't really get stressed out by the noise or anything, but it just, it's not as enjoyable for me when you have like a pop, 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 like, and everyone's firing like five, five, six and just larger calibers that even with earphones on, it's just kind of, you know, I go to the range to kind of get Zen and sometimes I'm just not feeling as much Zen when there's a bunch of people going crazy with their rifles. So, so that's all right though. You know, seven dollars and fifty cents. Um, that's a pretty good deal, as far as I'm concerned. And the targets, uh, they give you free targets. You pay a four dollar deposit, and then if you every side of the PVC you break, you you have to pay. But, uh, I haven't, you know, cross my fingers, I haven't broken any PVC yet. But uh, but at any rate, so if you have a firearm, you know, get out to the range, shoot a video. I haven't shot a video out at the range recently. 
partly because I only have the cell phone. I don't have a professional camera or a better camera. Um, that's really the main reason, just like mounting it and the zoom and stuff. And partly because the noise, there's just so many people out there. What I'd really love to do is go do some target practice in the National Forest. Um, I need to just double check that it's legal and kind of what the deal is on that. But, um, but anyways, let's continue on. I know I talked in the last video about hunting a little bit. I'll just kind of reiterate that since the hunting season goes through half the year, I'm kind of iffy on buying the license for just half the year. I mean, I am, I do really want to get out there and hunt, but I don't know, you know, I'm not going to be hunting deer or boar like in the next couple months, probably. Um, I don't have a high, I don't really have a high powered enough rifle to take ethical shots on a coyote at anything beyond, you know, if a coyote came up at 10 yards, I, I might be okay with a 22, but, um, and I have the nine millimeter too, but you know, past 10, 15 yards, I'm not confident enough I can make a good kill shot. So, so for the moment, um, and since I don't have a shotgun, you know, taking birds and stuff is kind of out of the picture. So I might just spend the first part of this year scouting, doing a little bit of camping, just kind of getting the lay of the land and then, uh, you know, buy the shotgun, buy some gear. I mean, I could easily drop $1,000 on shotgun and camping gear. So I really don't want to be hunting and be short of gear, you know, short of an axe or a shovel or, you know, I don't know, better radio or whatever. Um, you know, I don't mind roughing it. I'm not, I don't, I'm not the type of person that like needs to have everything perfect and every single piece of gear to go out and enjoy nature. But at the same time, sometimes it's just kind of nice to have you know, a minimal level of outdoor gear. And I don't quite have a minimal level of outdoor gear. I have most of the stuff, but like I kind of need stove hatchets and saws. I was talking about that on my last video. So still got hunting on my mind. If anyone's in the Los Angeles area and wants a buddy to go uh, scouting or trek around the wilderness, um, I'm, I might be open to that. I might not want to go out in the wilderness with you armed as the first encounter. Maybe we can get coffee first and make sure that, you know, make sure we're cool before we go out, you know, armed to the gills. And I wouldn't, you know, without a hunting license, I'm not going to go out armed. But at any rate, just putting it out there. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this kind of quick update. I'm going to, I think, talk about the news real quick in my next video. Thanks for watching YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Ooh.